How to be a good leader. These are just things that I have learned. Obviously, I don't know everything. So if I miss anything, feel free to let me know in the comments. Okay, number one is the art of delegation. A couple key things to keep in mind with regards to delegation. One, sometimes what people are good at is not necessarily what they like to do. One of the most famous examples of this is the Sistine Chapel painted by Michelangelo. Painted by Michelangelo who hated painting. Michelangelo hated painting. He wanted to sculpt. That was his thing, but he was really good at painting and he was forced to paint the Sistine Chapel. So you know what he did? All of the faces of the demons in hell had faces of the people who were commissioning this whole thing to be done because Michelangelo was so upset about having to paint instead of being able to sculpt that that is what he did. He painted these faces of people in hell who were essentially the people who were going to be enjoying this whole fresco to begin with. So if someone has a particular skill set that you really, really want in your project or on your team and they do not like that skill set, you need to make it very, very clear to them not only is this going to be worth their while, you're going to compensate them tremendously, but this is going to be a temporary thing for them. They are not gonna be doing this forever. This is a very short, make it as short as possible, actually. As short as possible, make this person as comfortable as possible if you want them to offer their skill set that they hate. Best case scenario, you've given them a newfound appreciation for this skill that they previously didn't really like, Worst case scenario, you end up with your face on a demon in hell. Kind of playing in with this is understanding the motivations of the members of your team. If you are the leader of a project, chances are you are going to be way more passionate about what's going on than the people around you. You cannot expect the people around you on your team who are coming in to help you accomplish this to be as invested as you. Sometimes they will be, and that is fantastic. But for some of them, this is a stepping stone job. For some of them, this is just what they're doing to pay the bills. You need to kind of understand where they're coming from and find a way to align your goals with their goals. So they may have different motivations for being there, but if you can align the goal of the project with their goal of being able to leave early on Fridays so they can go to their kids' soccer game, if you can find little ways to kind of make everything work together, that is a well-oiled machine and that is going to pay off immensely in the long run. Okay, number two is cultivating a healthy group dynamic. Take the mental health of your team very seriously. You are only as strong as your weakest link. Get very in tune with different personalities and try to see who is combative, who isn't. Some people will be combative about certain things and some people will avoid conflict altogether, even at the expense of themselves and others. And you really got to be in tune with all of that. And these are things that nobody is going to tell you. Nobody's going to say this in an interview. Um, and it would be kind of rude to ask. Also, even if someone is very, you know, you know, maybe they have different personalities and they're very combative or they're very passive, they may not see themselves that way. So they may not even realize the effect that they're having on a group. And all of this is, of course, separate from the actual skill sets that these people have. So if you have a bunch of people working together and they all have different skill sets, you need everybody being able to understand how different personalities work together. And as the leader, being able to kind of put people in positions where they're going to be comfortable and they're going to be able to do their job the best that they can without just irrevocable mental and emotional damage to the rest of the team, that is gonna help you achieve this goal in the long run a lot smoother. Okay, number three, this is not about your journey as a leader. 
this is about the mission of whatever it is you're trying to do. So this is kind of a hard one because as a leader, you are a human being. Like you, you have your own journey as you go through the process of learning how to be a good leader and how to lead effectively and how to take care of your team and how to make sure that the, the mission at the end of the day is accomplished without any, you know, hiccups or any outbursts or damages to the people on your team. But you can't talk about any of that. You cannot talk about your struggle as a leader or your journey in leadership anywhere that your team is going to be able to hear it. Do not do this. Do not do it in a public bathroom. Do not do it on the internet. Please don't do it on the internet. Oh my goodness. And the reason why, the reason why is because it's kind of like being the captain of a ship. You know, if you are on this ship and you are just doing your job and you know, there are things going wrong because some of the other crew members are a little upset and you hear the captain of the ship talking about how hard it is like they, your team doesn't have all the information that you do. So they're wondering, is the ship gonna sink? Like, am I wasting my time being here? Should I try to figure out a way out? Should I get on this lifeboat over here? Not only do these thoughts start going through their heads, but if you have someone on your team whose motivation, because you know, you're supposed to, you're supposed to be in tune with that, um, whose motivation is to dethrone you and to take the ship and sail it somewhere else, they're gonna be looking for those opportunities to commit a mutiny. And you do not want that. You don't want that. So if you're gonna vent, vent to someone who has no connection to your team in a place where your team is not gonna hear you vent, because obviously venting is important. You're a human being too. So you're gonna have to have some sort of friend group connections outside and separate from the entire mission the entire world ideally that your team operates in so leadership is about service at the end of the day no one said this was going to be easy but if you love the mission then it is always worth it playing into this you need to give a lot of credit, liberally. Just just literally throw it everywhere. Do not take anyone's anything. Like even if it's an insignificant little joke, give that person credit. Give, give literally everyone credit. And if someone, if you say you mess up, right? You do it, you do it on accident. You steal someone's joke on accident and that person calls you out for it. Give it to them. Do not double down especially if it's something stupid, especially if it's something stupid, because that sends a message. It sends a message that I do not have to take anything from anyone because I am secure in my own abilities to make this mission work, to make anything work. And also there is nothing stupider. There is nothing stupider than doubling down on stealing a joke that was insignificant to begin with anyway. Like just, these are just little things. They're little things, but they do make a big difference. The little things always make a big difference. Okay, number four, this is kind of um, related, related to number three. This is having friends who are excellent in their own unique fields. So these are the people who you should be venting to about your own leadership trials and tribulations, right? And the reason why is because excellence is the same across the board, across all fields. It just manifests itself in different forms based on the medium that you are practicing with, based on the tools, whatever you're working with. And when you have friends in different fields who are also either excellent or in the pursuit of excellence, they are by default leaders anyway just you know because that's a lot of the skills overlap and you know when you're good at something you end up being in charge of people and passing on the skill set etc right 
And when you look at excellence in different fields that you are not in the direct arena of, you are going to start seeing connections to your journey that you haven't seen before. You're gonna start seeing things that weren't readily apparent to you otherwise, and you are going to find solutions to problems and ways forward that you would not have thought of. It will diversify your mind and your thinking, and it is going to also make your leadership skills that much more dynamic and it's going to make you in your field stand out in a room full of leaders so in a full leadership lineup you are going to have more tools in your armory to go to battle with it's going to make your leadership style more engaging more dynamic and it's really going to help you develop your own unique leadership style that only you are going to be able to bring to the table. Number five is dress really, really well. Impeccably, even. Self-explanatory. Figure all of it out. The skincare, the hair care, the personal style, the color season, the kibby body type, whatever it is you're doing, figure it out. It, like I said, the little things matter. 